My dudes, what's going on? It's been over two worlds since our last gem shop tier list, so here it is. Not only do we have two new worlds with a whole new meta, we have added the limited time shop ones as well. We are talking over 80 items. Shout out to my Twitch subs and YouTube members that keep this dream a reality. Anyways, let's get into it. But first, disclaimer. I do not suggest you to buy anything in the game that is your own money. This is simply here to show you the upgrades will be the biggest bang for your buck. This is opinion and not to be stated as fact. This tier list is based on a generalization for all parts of the game. We go off price, what does it do, and if you were to buy it out completely. Obviously, some things are better to buy only one of, but we'd be here for 6 hours instead of 40 minutes. With that being said, let's get into the video. So we start off with S tier is a must get, A tier is the next best thing, B is middle of the pack, C is meh at best, and F is only if you whale. We have the four star cardifier, where you can take a three star card and it's a one time use, and you can change a three star into a four star without having to farm more cards. I would say four star cardifier is, you know, you can farm out mostly like world one, world two, world three, world four, no problem. But once you start getting to like world five, world six cards, and then you start getting into dungeon packs, and then you also start getting into uh, things like uh, bosses, that's when it really starts becoming huge. Like nightmare cards at four star is huge and event cards. So I will say C tier, it's it's mid at best. Five star cardifier, also known as a rubifier. It changes your four star card into a five star card. And this can only be obtained as of right now from the limited time shop. You should pretty much buy this every time it's in the limited time shop. It is so God tier. World six, if you think you're gonna, if you think you're gonna five star world six cards, you're crazy. If you think you're a five star nightmare bosses, you're crazy. It's S for majority of players, but as in a generalization, top of the pack A. We have the premium hat that's specifically the elemental sorcerer hat that gives 10% all stat or 5% all stat, sorry. And this also comes from the limited time shop. It's not like it's a priority by any means, but it's 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 not bad. It's great if you're a whale, it's fantastic. It's a must buy if you're a whale, but if you're an average player, it, it's B at best. This next one is the Ancient of Fire, which you can basically just buy ancient artifacts from the World 5 sailing. This used to be good back in like, like world five but now in like world six the amount of artifact find chance you get and everything it's just it's just not worth it it never really was worth it in the long run this is easy f tier get golden hampters and just wait for the procs honestly we have the item backpack space which gives plus four extra item slots by six of them for the max purchase of 1575 gems anytime there's going to ever be carry capacity or anytime there's going to be uh inventory or anytime there's gonna be storage you're always going to want this and it's for every character so this is this is s tier for sure. Easy. Battle trophies are the things that you get for the weekly battles that you can do once a week. And in the limited time shop, sometimes become available for purchase and they are actually really expensive. When this comes into limited time shop, it's it's not worth it. Just honestly, just do your weekly battles for the gems that you're spending for the trophies that you get. It's just not worth it. It's not, there's nothing that's truly beneficial to actually buy the trophies out at, rather than just waiting personally. So easily F tier not even a question so bleach cauldron means you can assign one extra player to the cauldron also has 1.5 times higher liquid cap and 1.5 times higher liquid regeneration and you can buy four of them so the maximum 2000 gems seeing that bleach cauldron has always been in my previous tier list has been s tier but we only said one cauldron now i think since things have changed a little bit with equinox and liquid investment and getting those up going more i honestly think that all the cauldrons are s tier getting all of them are absolutely eventually going to 100 percent be a must buy anybody that's saying anything else are actually sleeping on them and that should definitely try to focus on getting all bleach cauldrons especially with their free to play gems if you can this is a hundred percent an s tier but purchase this is something that you absolutely want bottled winds which basically is time candy for sailing that gives you six hours of sailing progress buy all four of them it's going to cost you 760 gems and it's a daily reset bottle winds are garbage buy them if you're a whale okay that that's it it's whale stuff don't waste your time don't waste your money this is a daily purchase sure this was good this was okay in world five it's useless now just it's f tier just don't even bother wasting your time with this brimstone forge what brimstone forge slots does is it smelts bars 50 percent faster and you have a 50 percent multi-bar chance and not to mention you can buy 16 of them which is the max amount of forge you can get for a grand total of 3400 gems this is easily, easily S tier for all of them. Obviously, when you first start the game, you only want to buy about four because four will carry you a long ways. But once you start getting into like mid to later game, you 100% are going to want to buy all of these out. Four for sure, guaranteed S tier. After that, once you get mid to late game, it still stays at S tier. So build slots and loss of plus one more slot to build in your construction tab. 
You can buy four of them for a grand total of 2,000 gems. So I think when it comes into a generalization, I think build slots are not going to really be something you prioritize until more of a later game because you're not really going to have the resources in, in order to farm in the first place. Not to mention in total, it's going to be 2,000 gems. These will be super good later game, but for at the start, I would say you're, you're looking at about B tier. It's a middle of the pack, but it's not something you want to prioritize right away. So if you guys don't know what Burning Books does, it raises the minimum level books for the talent book library but plus five you buy four of these for a grand total of 1450 gems you know it i know it we all know it this is going to be easily f tier you have a construction from the automation arm that makes it so you could use 20 books to get the max upgrade anyways this is only minimum book level this is not maximum book level this is absolute garbage it's not worth the roll don't even bother wasting your time. I don't want to see anybody buying these. Extra card slots lets you equip another card so you can have more card bonuses. You can buy four of them for a grand total of 840 gems. We all know that card slots are one of the most important things in this game. These will give you insane amounts of upgrades, not to talk about anything from multi-kill per tier to drop rate to damage percent to money percent. Cards are literally one of the most important mechanics in the game, and it's only 840 gems. This is super, super, super cheap. This is literally the definition of bang your buck. We are going top of the top. Carry capacity. Each purchase boosts carry capacity by 25% for all your characters. You can buy 10 of them for a grand total of 2,625. I would say for carry capacity, it becomes S tier more late game and when it's an absolute necessity, but what, as you're pushing or as you're probably like world four, world five, world three, it's going to be more of the lines of A tier. I want to put on S tier, but also it's to buy all 10 of them at 2,625 gems. So I would think that in total, it's very, very good once you start hitting late game, but it's top of the pack A tier. So obviously chat rings completely cosmetic. It's more of a flex. The only thing that would make this any difference is if we're including the Equinox chat ring that gives you all stat percent. But you can only get that through a paid package, not from gen farming itself. So chat rings, literally only a whale thing. Sure, you get a couple of extra stats, but you also have to buy premium stones with it as well. Not to mention some chat rings cost way more than others. So in general, it, it's 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 F tier. I would suggest at least over bottled wins, to be honest. So chest slugs increase the number of chests of your sailing loot pile can hold by plus one. Purchase them 12 times for a grand total of 5,640 gems. Although chest slugs are potent for getting extra capacity, there's also also things that you could consider uh such as the siege breaker talent or even things like you know you get more chests from like stuff like dream catcher because to buy all of them is so damn expensive like we're talking 5640 gems i would put that at like just above build slots console chips which gives you console chips and have 22 different chips so it's basically a gamble to get one you can buy seven a week it will cost you 2695 for seven of them this one's a little bit split i feel like this one will be a little bit controversial because honestly i really like it until you get choco chip because choco chips rotation is so dog water but i feel like after you get choco chip it's kind of like you can just wait for that time to get them but i mean like there's only real specific chips that you get but there's some chips that you get that are absolutely terrible like those are the chips that you do not want s tier until you get choco chip and if you can get good on your rolls i i think i think it's c tier this is it's not quite whale status it is expensive but in the end it, it, it's the choco chip it's the choco chip that matters cog inventory space each purchase gives you plus four cog inventory spaces and you can buy 20 of them for a grand total of 9,600 gems for all of them. But I've, I've never, never capped out on COGS. This has not been a thing. Not to mention you're spending 9,600. There's also a vial to get more COG inventory. Nobody ever needs this. Don't even bother. There's over $50 that you need in order to get max out COG inventory. Just scrap your COGS like a normal human being. F tier. Moving on. Ivory Bubble Cauldrons, where you can assign two extra players to this cauldron and have 1.5 times faster brewing and 1.5 times higher new bubble chance. You can buy four of them for a grand total of 1,500 gems. So this one's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. This definitely helps with uh, Bubo for cranium cooking, getting to just go with these bubbles, getting them as fast as possible. Not to mention, you're gonna get to a point where literally bubbles cost like 0.06% chance in order to get a new bubble. It's pretty bad. 
So even getting just that little bit of extra is always going to be huge, not to mention the extra brewing. So your cranium cooking is even more that potent and it's going to be useful for literally every single world. So for all of them, I would give it a bottom of the pack S tier Crescent Moon Pendant, which it gives us 10 to all stat, not percentage, just base stat, three weapon power, 42% XP for monsters, 5% mob respawn and 10 defense. I want to put it at C tier, but that's coming from a privileged whale perspective. I think I think it's going to be, have to be top of the pack F tier. You can buy it, but it, but it's it's for slab. You're basically only doing it. We have plot of land, which perfectly gives you plus one plant plots to grow crops in. You can buy a total of 12 of them, which gives you a grand total of 7,680 gems because you can it, it's a huge boost. It's 12 extra land plots, but you can also buy those land plots in the 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 day day market you obviously can't max it out but i mean getting it just started maybe maybe s tier for like the one to two plots just to get your farming started but like without it it takes a lot longer i would think i would think for the land plots the garden plots specifically is it's it's hard to do farming without them but it's all it is is a time gate it doesn't make it impossible to do it without it so i would say i would say right behind rubifiers just because of the cost if it was cheaper it would be heavy s tier crystal 3d printer unlocks the second printer chamber to print stuff in for all characters and you only have to buy this once for 875 gems i think without a doubt it should unironically be in its own tier it should be crystal tier it's it, it's i think i think it's top of the pack I don't think I could ever live my life without taking half the amount of prints that I have now. Not to mention things like Atom Collider, not to mention things like even just trying to get prints for your resources for green stacking, not to mention monster prints to keep your refinery going. But you gotta realize without Crystal Printer in the mid to early game, keeping your refinery going so you get out of Salt Lock is like almost astronomically harder to do without it. Not to mention getting level 13 vials. I'm gonna put it, I, I, I might get some slack for it. I might get some hate for it, but I'm I'm going to put it top of the pack S tier. Daily teleports. Each purchase gives you plus 13 daily teleports every day. And you can go up to six days without claiming these. You can buy them 10 times for a grand total of 3,000 gems. This is completely quality of life. They're pretty good early game if you buy like one, one or two. But if you buy them out completely, you're never going to run out of teleports. But at the same time, this is really good for like V-Man speed runs. That's definitely something that's huge. Or early game. Oh man, movement speed in the early game is absolutely abysmal. It's pretty good, but I wouldn't put it anywhere other than B tier. Divinity Sparky does is boost the amount of Divinity points and Divinity XP gained by 25% for all players. Also adds Divinity Sparkle that wanders around. You can buy six of them for a grand total of 2,250 gems. It's almost an A tier, but I feel like it just falls kind of short. It's kind of the same thing as like chest slugs. It makes it the grind a little bit easier, but it's not like it's going to really change things. It's same deal as chest slugs. So just above chest slugs, not quite at A tier. The limited shop drop rate keychains that gives 15% in the first miscellaneous slot and 10% in the second miscellaneous slot for a 25% drop rate. You can buy two of these when they usually come in the limited time shop, and then you can double it for a grand total of 75% in your keychain slots for drop rate. In my personal opinion, hella worth it because you're always going to be this is mostly for your active character and your active character is always going to be running these basically no matter what unless you're like running boobo for money percent but if you're running elemental sorcerer or you're running dk mixing to mortal last time we checked they're about 760 gems they might be cheaper when they come out so and they're from the limited time shop so sometimes if you get it i mean it, they're just best personally i would put them just because they're drop rate i would say bottom of the s if you if you find them in limited time shop I would pick them up. Balling name tag gives you 40% drop rate, but it cost for one name tag 2,400 gems. I, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I love drop rate. I think drop rate is freaking fantastic and I'm down bad, especially with the Siege Breaker and not to mention the uh, the premium pack to, to multiply this even more. But just because of the price and you're literally not going to be using this other than late game, 
I'm gonna have a lot of controversy for this, but I would still suggest this over rolling. It's top of the pack C tier. But Griffey, you put the keychain up up top. Yeah, and it's like, oh, Griffey, what about Elemental Sorcerer Hat? The name tag is three times the cost of the Elemental Sorcerer Hat. I can't justify the price. I'm sorry, I can't do it. It's unfortunate. Maybe I'll take one L in this tier list, but I can't justify this being any higher than C tier. We have the Dungeon Loot Dice that each purchase gives you two dungeon dice to roll. And this also gives you a chance of getting keychains and they cost 225 five gems a piece you we all know this you can get dice free to play so weekly dungeon boosters you get a three additional dungeons runs per every week forever you already get 12 runs for free so you can buy 11 of them for a grand total of 5225 when i'd say it comes to the dungeon boosters i would say i can argue maybe buying three of them until you can cover your times 20 per week but other than that, you get to a point where you just stop doing party dungeons and they just start accumulating. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I have like 2000 dungeon boosters that I never use and I never plan on using. Bottom of the pack C tier. If they're, if we're only discussing like one or two or maybe three of them buying, I would put it more of like top of B tier. So chat, we have cartons of eggs, which gives you anywhere from three to 12 eggs in your item inventory. You can buy four a day for a grand total of 1,080 gems. Easy S tier, you wanna buy these every day? I would know, I'm an egg enthusiast. All jokes aside, bro, go do your world for a Coliseum with your DK. You can farm these out easy. This is a waste. Not to mention the RNG is Garbo. Terrible. Do not, do not spend money on these. Just go do your World 4 Coliseum. It's still better than Dungeon Dice, but don't go do it. Elite Class Swap Tokens. It means you can swap from an Elemental Sorcerer to a Bubonic Conjurer. When it comes to other situations, if you screwed up, it's S tier. If you have not screwed up, it's F tier. So I would put this more in a situational tier, okay? So I'm putting bottom of the pack C tier, but keep in mind that this is a situational tier. This is this is for that specific thing as if you mess up specifically. Fence Yard Space unlocks two Fence Yard slots, which is good for breedability pets and shiny pets. You can buy six for a grand total of 2,325. In reality, if you're at that part of the game where you just enter World 4, or you're getting into World 5, you don't have the breed ability, you don't have the breed yet to really get good breedability pets, or let alone get breedability pets in the first place. And not only that, get shiny pets. So if they don't give you the potency when you buy right away. So I will give it B tier, middle of the pack, just below build slots. Because the difference with Divinity Sparks and Chest Slugs is they're potent as soon as you buy them. Gaming Fertilizer gives you a, the ability to skip eight hours of gaming progress. And this restocks each day. You can buy four of them for a grand total of 920 gems. Gaming first F tier. One or two, maybe just to help push something. But in reality, this doesn't help you very much for gaming, especially in late game gaming or in even in early game gaming. It's the price. And it's not to mention it's the daily purchase and a one time use. It's like the same buying time candy. It's the same thing as carton of eggs. Not to mention there's quests that can give you it to help you push. I mean, in reality, you would either do it for the nuggets or to push uh, the rarity of the plant. But other than that, you can get gaming bonus. So it's like, eh, it's kind of meh at best. So I would I would put that, you know, right beside eggs. It's not, it's just not worth it. Fluorescent flaggies makes your flaggies unlocks places faster in the construction. So each purchase gives flaggy rate plus 50% and you can buy six of them for a grand total of 2,625. Are you telling me that you're going to spend 2,625 gems for 300% flaggy rate? I mean, maybe buy one just for 250, but either than that, I would say it's it's not it's not good. It's really not, and it becomes redundant after a while, so I would say I would say this is F tier. Food slot, it gives you an extra food slot, Jeff. You get four doing quests and just natively have two, so this gives you an extra two. You can buy both of them for a grand total of 1200 gems i would say we all know this is s tier food slots are fantastic they're absolutely a must-have for stuff like foods for golden foods for consumables all of that but i can't justify putting it past leech cauldron it's definitely above bag though it is still a high priority in s tier insta grow generator each purchase gives you plus two daily insta grows every day once you lock in forever and each purchase gives a plus 20 percent additional chance for plus one crop when fully grown you can buy eight of these for a max total of 6280 gems i'm gonna put it just above garden plots they're both like neck and neck here for, for terms of cost, if it if, there, if it was way cheaper, it would be S tier, but the terms of cost and the boost to the 
I think it just wins just because of the plus one crop. It's something to get you going, but this will definitely help you for pushing, you know, crops for crop evolution. Golden Pocket Watch allows you to skip a full day and reset all of your daily timers. This is like alchemy upgrades for Boron. This is your shops. This is, this is, you know, like your, like your no bubble left behind. This is your no meal left behind, but this can only, this realistically only be purchased in a limited time shop setting. You cannot buy this anywhere else. It's an, it's, this is another situational one, but I'm going to say it's F tier. Now, the reason why, the reason why I'm saying it's F tier, okay, before you get crazy, before you get mad at me, just hear me out, is because you can get these in the weekly battle shops. We have the golden sprinkler. It's the sprinkler in the garden, which instantly regrows sprouts, has a 30% chance to not use up its charge, and each additional purchase boosts this chance by 1.5 times. And also instantly unlocks the sprinkler if not unlocked yet. You can buy this four times for a grand total of 2,050 gems. I would say it's top of the pack B tier. I wouldn't say quite makes it into A tier, but it's but it's it's definitely it's it, you you only buy one. You don't you shouldn't buy one more than one. If 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 you wanted to buy all of them, yeah, sure they they'll, they'll go up higher in tier. But since you only buy one, I would say top, I say it's better than Sparky's chest slugs. Middle of the pack B tier. Summoning heart is a refills one life in summoning, so you can get that battle you're stuck on. You can buy twelve for a grand total of one thousand six hundred. 92 this refills daily this is clearly a whale purchase this is absolutely a whale purchase you're not going to have this any other this is 100 percent whale this is just above dice you're barely ever going to use this you just wait for daily reset you try again now hyper obols have a chance to be the best in slot circle drop rate obol has a chance to be a multi-kill per tier circle obol has a chance to be a all stat percent circle obol or has a chance to give you damage percent obol and you can only get this in the limited time shop like you got to realize you're paying upwards of 700 gems for one hyper obol i personally think that this is going to be the top of the f here's why because you only get one obol per purchase the best one that you can realistically get is a all stat one, which is going to be quite frankly, it's pretty good, but the chance of you getting it is really low. I have bought every single hyper obol I possibly could get, and I've only gotten one of the all stat. Most of them, the multi-kill one is fantastic. I will put that in. It's great for multi-kill. But other than that, this is another whale purchase. Hey, you can just, you can make do with what you got. Infinity hammer it lets you produce two anvils items at once and chat it gives you plus one anvil hammer not only that it cost 300 gems if we're considering everything if we're considering price if we're considering what it does if we're considering in the stage of the game sure later on it gets a little bit more redundant but for all stages of the game and for the price I'm gonna put it above Crystal 3D Printer. Now I know you guys are gonna go wild with it, but you gotta remember that production items are the reason why you can get more armor. It's the reason why you can make your Amarok armor to push. It's the reason why you can get your Void armor. It's the reason why you can get any of that. And it's because it's 300 gems. You literally, this is your first purchase within literally an hour to two hours of playing. Mainframe jewels gives you a random jewel that you already own. No need to worry about duplicate jewels because these just restock every week. You can purchase two of them and every week and the total for two of them costs 900 gems. The price, the chances of getting burnt, but the chances of getting really good ones, the RNG is still there. The price isn't too bad and it's a weekly reset. I would give it top of the pack B tier. Rich Alert Kitchen upgrades one kitchen in order from first to last. A Rich Alert Kitchen has three times meal cooking speed, two times recipe speed, and 40% cheaper upgrade costs. You can buy 10 of these for a grand total of 4,300 gems. You only need, when you're doing like a generalization, you're only going to need realistically like three kitchens. And those would be like high, high S tier. But since we're doing a generalization for the price, I would put it right here. Just above the generator, just above the plots to buy them all decently high a tier you're gonna eventually need these all and the price just justifies that cost miracle chats give you one miracle chest from a random island these have 20 times percent more treasure 30 times higher artifact chance including ancient artifacts this item restocks daily you can buy three of them a day it costs you 1035 we'll put this right next to the ancients it's a little bit it's a it's it's it's, it's behind ancients because you know it feels really bad you'll spend 345 gems to not get an artifact mini game replays each purchase gives you additional four daily mini games and a grand total of 900 so that gives you 21 mini games i feel like they're cool but they be they 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 ha they're useful early but then they start be having a redundancy to them I, I would say i would say right beside dungeon boosters a keychain 
a mob respawn keychain that gives you 20% mob respawn per purchase that come with the limited time shop. These are giga OP. These are about 800 gems a pop. So I would say same thing. It's in the limited time shop. It'll be S tier when they come out. They're right beside, they're right beside the drop rate keychains. Cosmic storage. These give you plus nine extra storage chests and you can buy 10 of them for 90 spaces for 5,040 gems. So these ones are pretty huge. I would give it S tier. So food slots, bag and storage are kind of all the same. They're all really good together because it's just more more space. So it goes there, but I say they're pretty equal in S tier. And, and, and while we're here as well, we'll go ahead and throw the other storage chests in there as well, just because it is the same. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is slightly, slightly cheaper. Okay, so the Shroom Familiar adds a Shroom Familiar to your Summoning Sanctuary, which gives you a permanent 1.40 times bonus to all Essence gain. You buy three of them for a maximum of 2,610 gems. So I would say Shroom Familiar is very, very strong because the Essence gain, it is a multiplier. It's fantastic. But over time, you are going to be getting to a point where you're going to be pretty much done with uh, with summoning. And uh, I would overall think that the multipliers that you'll get from summoning anyways will just be so astronomical. Uh, it's almost an S tier. I would almost say S tier, but it's a it's high A tier. Like this is definitely something that you would suggest getting when you can pick it up. Oval storage, uh, you can buy this 12 times and it gives you a grand total of 6,300 gems. So you get 16 circles, eight squares and four hexagons and sparkles. Until once you're like really late game and you have like multiple, multiple, multiple sets, you're going to need them. But if you don't need multiple sets, then it's not really a priority. So for a generalization, I would put it there. Super, super, super situational decision. So it's not a whale thing. We have ovals. It's the same deal. Ovals, ovals are, are, are whale purchases, to be completely honest. I'm going to put both obols F whale purchase down here. You can farm all of these free. Any obols you need, alchemy shop or obols from bosses or mini bosses or you or you farm out giga frogs. Like you actually don't need to use these. These only times you'll ever purchase these is if you want to skip the alchemy grind uh for for the chopping obols or the mining obols or like maybe like the worships or whatever but other than that i mean you don't really need these these are easy f tier pet storage unlocks 12 pet storage spaces which is an entire row and you can buy 12 of them for a grand total of 7530 gems if we're going off by like buying like one or two pet storage i would put it in c tier but if you don't hoard pets and you just specifically only have shinies to swap out for your beast master yeah maybe one or two is fine but other than that i mean it's a whale purchase but it's the top of the pack of the whale purchase to be fair combos bag instantly gets four hours of farming growth for all your crops and this item restocks daily you can buy nine of them for a grand total of 1395 i don't suggest these i personally think they're f tier i think they go right beside bottle wins it's it's only four hours lava sprouts increases the number amount of sprouts you can have in your garden plus one and you can get six of them for a maximum of 2910 acquired because you at least need one in order to finish off equinox and honestly just getting 20 in total it's it's the price is super useful and it's super worth it and it's 2910 gems I would 100% put this top of the pack A tier. You're going to want this. Gaming is a huge thing. Blanco balls. This is for all balls. This is including your 100, your 500, and your 1,000. Let's be honest here. If we had a G tier, this is where we would be. Don't buy Blanco balls unless you are down bad, okay? I was down bad. You know why I bought so many Blanco balls? Content, honestly. It's a Gamba tier. This is, this is, this is the heaviest Gamba ever, dude. You run out of content, you're in maintenance mode, buy some balls. This Use this, this is situational. Use this at your own discretion, okay? Post office reset, we don't even need to do a poll for this. This is F tier. Post office reset is F tier. You can get this at events. You do event, the chances one of these dropping is usually one in a thousand. Prayer slots, which allows you to equip plus one more prayer at the same time on all characters. There's four of them with a grand total of 1,450. For prayer slots, sure, for quality of life later game, uh, but in reality, it's kind of the same as pet storage. Uh, you're not going to get to a point where you're actually going to need this. Uh, it's another whale purchase. You just you just need to get your you just need to get your wizard up. Cards presets lets you swap between card loadouts with ease. No more manly swapping cards or doing different things. Each gives plus one preset for all characters. You can buy a total of five of them with a grand total of 2,850. Now that card cross platform is fixed, 
it's a little bit stronger. I would say, I would say this is situational. If you want them, get them. If not, it's kind of the same as uh, Orbital Storage. It's a little bit better. You could totally live without buying any of these and just manually swapping cards. Pure quality of life. It's up to your own discretion whether you want them or not. Is it, I mean, I would say maybe it's better than Orbital Storage because you have a lot of cards, but yeah, you, you can live completely without these. Pristine Charms gives you random pristine charms in your sneaky inventory, which gives you a permanent bonus to your account. You cannot get duplicates of this. An item restocks every day. You can buy two of them per week, get a total of 1,840. I would say pristine charms are the exact same jewels, except you don't need to reach them, and they're their own entity rather than needing a node in order to make the jewel potent. So I would say be middle of the pack. They make it a little bit better. Sure, you need like summoning bonuses to make it better, or you need like gold food, but overall, it's still its own entity. We have random wings which come from the limited time shop where you have a chance to roll one of the wings that are currently available. That also means some of them that come from the card or that some of them that come from the actual paid pack. So that's like the Phoenix wings, or you have a potential chance to get your best in slot golden rose wing. And this, it usually comes around about 1150 gems. How many times have you guys gotten Amrock wings? Nah, 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 I, I'm, I'm vetoing everybody. This is 100% whale. You're gonna spend 1150 gems on a potential chance to get Amrock wings. The people that have a potential chance to get golden rose, it's it's still Gamba. It's, it, bro, it's, it's expensive and it's not worth, in my personal opinion. You see a couple of people that get Phoenix wings or a couple of people that get gold Gold roses, sure. That's a very, very small in between. That's like saying people that get dupe free to play, okay? It's a very, very small percentage. The gamble is not worth it. Strong disagree. F tier. Sample slots give you plus one slot for your 3D printer. You can buy six of them for a grand total of 3,150. You also have to take into consideration with the new sailing artifact, the gold artifact, which allows you to increase your multiplier even more without having to retake samples. And let's be honest here, chat. You know it. I know it. We all know it. Nobody wants to spend hours doing 3D prints, so you might as well just have more sample space to do it once. If we're taking this from more of an end game standpoint, I would 100% say S tier, anything different than S tier not but the quality of life saves you literal d days so i would say top of the pack b tier it would it's almost an a tier almost an a tier but it just falls short just because it is quality of life but it does help a lot with with this with the gold artifact but it's not like they're cheap they're 190 a piece you can buy six of them for 1140 and restocks daily this is easy it may be one of the best of the hours to push but let's be honest here if you have not purchased everything in the gem shop by this point in time, there should be no reason why you should be ever buying Sands of Time. Siege Breaker Cap. This is the 10% drop rate premium hat. I think you you know it. I know it. We all know it. It goes right beside the Elemental Sorcerer. It's the same thing. It may be this drop rate, but it's only 10%. We have Sigil Supercharge, which each purchase gives you a permanent bonus of 20% Sigil XP. And you must reach World 4 before you can level up Sigil. So you can buy 10 of these for a grand total of 3,850. It's, it's definitely a late game thing. It's not something that you're necessarily 100% paying attention to until you have everything else done in alchemy and then you start focusing on it. But until then, it's not bad, with, especially with the new World 6 bonuses that make it a little bit faster. It does help with the ticks. So I would put it at, it, it was originally at low F tier. I would probably put it right above the bailing name tag and I'll give Sigil Speed's top of C tier. Silver Pocket Watch. It's kind of the same as the Golden Pocket Watch, except the difference is, is it pushes your time by 15 minutes. It's 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 F tier. It's the same thing. You can you can also buy this in the weekly time shop. It's 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 not it's not worth. It's it's meh, at bad. It's it's F. We all know it. It is what it is. Souped up lab tubes. Each purchase soups up two lab tubes. Players get two times lab XP and 30% line width, and you can get five of them for a grand total of 3,050. I think because of the new update it is a little bit better. You're gonna eventually need to get 21. 100 uh, lab levels across all characters for that skill mastery. But until later game, this also helps you get out of divinity and lab grind a little bit faster. So I would say this is the same deal as the divinity sparks. I would put divinity sparks and lab side by side with each other. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, we all know what this is. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is literally F tier. Like, like this, like bro, this is, this is the bottom of the pack F tier. Not only, is this F tier? You can literally just craft these. You can you can literally just craft thousands of these without a problem. They're, they're, it's not. Don't. It's a trap. It's a trap. The skill point resets. The star talent point resets. Shouldn't even be on the list, but there is because they're part of the gem shop. Subclass swap token. Same deal. Same deal. F tier. Don't even buy these. 
And this does not work for elite classes. You cannot use that to swap elite classes. Summoner Stone gives you a Summoning Stone usable item that you can use at once to instantly get four hours of Summoning Essence instantly. It restocks each day. You can buy nine of them for a grand total of 1,395. These go all the way down where compost is. It's only four hours. It's not even a lot. It's 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 literally four hours. It's F tier. They don't even bother wasting your time buying these. It's just it's just a waste. Stone Royal Egg Cap, which boosts the max number of eggs in your breeding nest by plus one. Also, as an added bonus, you get 1.10 times new pet breeding chance to each time you buy this. You can buy five of them for a grand total of 2,250. It's kind of like the same deal as chest slug. Because nowadays, it used to be it used to be a lot harder to get a, a lot more new breeding chance, but now it's much easier than what it was before. So I think in, in total, I mean, it's good, but it's not like crazy. Like if you want to, it's great. It cuts a ton of DNA out, but I mean, and, and you also get more egg capacity, which is great for late game players. It's 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 not really that good. I'm going to be completely honest. But for but for like more early game, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit better. I will I will give that a, a, a solid just below middle of the pack, just below uh, fence yard. Tier one keychain, tier two keychain, and tier three keychain. These kind of the same deal as his Plinko balls. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I mean, I would say the only thing that I'd argue is the tier three keychain. The other ones are are down here. Even dungeon dice have more useful. But the RNG chance is a gamble tier. The, 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 you're 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 a massive whale if you're going for that. All three of those are F tier. Absolutely, 100%. Don't even bother with these. This is for whales only. Purchasing time candy daily go anywhere from ranging from 24 hour time candies to one hour i would say again obviously this is whale don't ever buy daily time candy okay don't just don't do it just, just don't do it it just it just is what it is just, just don't even bother man it's too expensive just farm them just go do your coliseums go do your mini bosses go farm your giants you're gonna have tons of candy in the end anyways we have world one card pack F tier. Don't buy this card pack. It's a waste. World 2 card pack. F tier. World 3 card pack. F tier. World 4 card pack is also oh not worth it. Just leave it where it belongs. World 5 card pack. I would say just a little bit better than everything else, but still not better. Would not suggest these are still easily farmable. You should check out my card farming guide. And finally, we have World 6 card packs, which is a different scenario. World Spirit card packs cost 720 gems per purchase. World 6 card packs are really, really good. It is honestly at that point where it's going to take years of farming World 6 to get all of them to 5-star. Literal years. Not months, not weeks, like everything else, like all the other cards, we're talking about even in the end game, it will take you years. The scaling is way too high for World 6. You just need to get them to three star and then you cardify them. That's how you make it cheap. You're not going to get these to four star by buying card packs. You're not going to get these to five star by buying card packs. You're literally going to buy to get three stars and then you're going to then you're going to take your cardifier for four star and then your rubifier for five star. That is how you're going to do that. There is really, unfortunately, no other ways to do it. I put World 6 card packs A tier. Middle of the pack A tier. Kill rings. Now remember chat, these only come from the limited time shop and they are kill per kill rings. They are not multi-kill rings and they are they are not mob respawn rings. They are specifically kill per kill. So the things that they only have the things the only effect is portal kills, death note kills, and V-man pushing for their for the V-man speedrun. It's kill per kill. If it was multi-kill, totally different opinion, but it's not multi-kill. It's only kill per kill. Zen cogs have been buffed since the last time we have done a tier list. And to buy all of them, to buy all eight, costs 7,500 gems. And you also, that means you get eight Zen cogs and two sets of Excogia. Ex I would say Zen cogs, although they got a buff and they're a lot better, I still can't justify the price. I would put them right below fence yard. They're still nice to have. Our last one, Draconic Cauldron. It's it's better than Bleach Cauldrons, but it's so infrequent in the in the uh, limited time shop. You can't get this whenever you can. It increases your speed and uh, liquid cap. I'm pretty sure if you already have one in Bleach Cauldrons for that specific one that you bought it for, I'm pretty sure it only gives you more liquid cap, but I'm not sure. Leave it in the comic section if you think you know what it actually, how it works. Pretty sure if you don't have Bleach Cauldron, it gives you more speed as well. If you do have Bleach Cauldron, it doesn't give you more speed. Regardless, I think it's great at S tier. It's Alchemy. Alchemy is Bay. Alchemy is Abyss. But this is the tier list. I will have the image on the screen. First tier list that I did back in a year ago. 
and then this new one and tell me what you guys think if you guys disagree if you guys agree like i said do not take this as fact this is completely based off opinion off a of twitch chat and uh off of myself deciding i don't think we have any final changes i think for the most part if you guys are wondering what is going to be the best gem 3 purchase this is relatively what we're going to go with obviously take it with a grain of salt it is what it is some people are going to disagree which is totally fine with me but i think as long as we're about 70 percent, i think everything's fine itty bitty army remember to like comment and subscribe but anyways my dudes i gotta get back to the guide grind stay tuned for the next ilon video stay safe happy grinding and peace out